How's it going guys? So if you watched my last video, you would have seen this enclosure and the rock background. And today we're gonna to set it up for the little snake that's going in there. So this is a Stimson's python. We're gonna set up an arid sort of enclosure with a little snake. So for this background, I actually decided, because it fits so perfectly, I'd actually leave it as a removable background, so I didn't actually stick it in or anything like that. That's for two reasons. Um, ease of cleaning, so if the animal does defecate all over it, which oftentimes they do, you can easily bring it out, take it outside, hose it off, anything like that. And um, also as well, if the animal managed to get behind it, it's easy to get it out. Along with the fact that this animal that's gonna be going in here isn't gonna be in this closure its entire life. So it's only small right now, and it'll be in this probably quite a few years, but once it reach adult size, uh, it'll go to a bigger upgrade and then I can use this tank for something else down the line without having to tear out a whole background. So nice and easy and removable, it's good to go. So first things first, because this is a removable background, we've actually stuck some adhesive to the back of it just to make sure it sticks to the wall so the snake can't squeeze in behind it. So now we come to our lighting and the point of lighting is to try and replicate the sun. So at the moment, the best sort of options we have are a big light bar here. This is an LED, a 6,500 Kelvin. This is gonna give you a snake uh, the daylight spectrum, the visual light. And then with that, we also have UVB. Now UVB isn't often always considered with snakes, but I think it's good for any sort of uh, land dwelling reptile that is gonna be exposed to sunlight. It's good to have UVB in there. This is a, actually an old Arcadia tube I've got in here. It was a 12%, but um, it's obviously diminished a lot by now. So she's gonna get a little bit of UV off it still. And either way, it'll be beneficial for us. So we'll pop these on. And then as long as benefiting the snakes, it also benefits us because it makes the enclosure look nice and bright and natural. So for substrates, Stimson's pythons can have lots of different substrates. You can have something simple as paper or uh, wood chips, wood shavings. Or uh, at the moment, she's sitting on some Yuki mulch, you know, the classic Yuki mulch, you guys know I love that. But because we're going for more of a natural look with this setup, I've actually got a few different things. So here I've got some beautiful red sand, of course, and then some crushed granite as well. Crushed granite you can just get from Bunnings, it's or decomposed granite, it's called there. And red sand, obviously you can buy it from pet shops and things like that, but I was lucky enough to source this myself. So we'll dump in a bunch of that. If you do it a desert enclosure, it's hard to beat some nice red sand in there. And I'm glad that uh, my painting skills have come through because I think it matches with the background pretty well. Then along with that, I've actually sieved down all the fine parts of uh, a bag of Yuki mulch here. So this is quite fine stuff and I'm gonna mix this in as well just because I love using the Yuki mulch because that eucalyptus has many beneficial properties. It'll hold back the fungus, mold, bacteria as well. So a bit of that mixed in will help you know, lessen the degree in which that stuff will grow and spread. So it'll keep the tank fresher for longer. So I don't want to put too much of this because it will kind of dilute the, uh, the nice red sand. Just a bit mixed through to give those added benefits. Just do that and just give it a good mix through. It also mimics a lot of the natural debris and old timber and things that are in the environment anyway. It really complements the mix. So heating is of course the, one of the most important parts in keeping any reptile. So for this one, I'm going to be using one of these heat projectors. Um, these work really well and it's just because at the moment the nighttime temperatures are still getting quite low. So just so we can heat all through the day and all through the night, not have any light interfering with that. But as summer comes through, we'll move over to a, uh, a halogen or something like that that produces some light as well to be a bit more natural. Uh, and of course, with any sort of heat source and reptiles, you want to have a thermostat. So we're using one of these Inkbird thermostats. You can connect it to your phone, set alarms, and uh, always see from anywhere where you are through the Wi-Fi system what sort of temperature your animal's at. So let's set this up. Of course, we will put the heat to one side. I'm going to put it on the, left, uh, the right side here on top and then we'll plug that into our thermostat. So we'll plug that into the heating side. And then another great thing about these thermostats is they have really long probes. So obviously your probe is gonna be picking up your temperatures and controlling your temperature like that. So we're gonna bring that up and around. And obviously the good thing about these exoterras is they have little vents in the back here that you can open up 
and slip cables through. So this will slip right through this side here. We'll close that up so nothing else can come through. And then I'm probably just gonna leave it up in the back here. I might tape it to the side and it can read our temperatures from there. So now comes the real fun part, adding in all the decorations and you know, getting that real naturalistic look. So I've got a bunch of different branches and things here, some old gum leaves. So let's throw it in and get that nice dry desert look. So we have this nice sort of spindly dry branch here. And oftentimes you'll see photos and videos of Simpsons pythons in the wild hanging out and stuff like this. So I thought it'd be really cool to add in. And she should make the most of this. You can come out on here and bask under the light. We'll add in another branch here. This one's a bit thicker. Different thicknesses is always good. Give them some variety in what they can do. Right. That would be pretty awesome. So just some simple branches you can climb on, but it makes all the difference. We also have this awesome hollow log. So I'll put this on the bottom and if she can hide inside this, feel nice and secure, get nice and snug in there. And again, looks really nice and natural. And I'm hoping she'll pop her little head out of the top here, this little hole. And we have different levels in which she can bask and get to that heat. Obviously right at the top here where it's gonna be quite baking hot bit lower and then down here as well it'll probably be about 30 degrees or so. so again even though it is a desert setup and with that dry sort of look there is always a bit of greenery around it does also look really cool so I'll try to throw these up around the place a bit quite nice Something like that and again it's added cover for the snake now just to make her feel extra at home I'm going to put in her favorite little hide it is simply just one of those plant pot holder things with a little hole cut in it, but she loves living in it. So I'm going to put it in the back and cover it in some sand and leaf litter to disguise it. And it'll work great. Alright, so there's the enclosure done. Now, as always, we can obviously watch the snake's behaviour when she's in there, see if we need to add more hides or change things around. Always watch the animals and see how they're interacting with the environment to see if it's good or if you need to change anything. But uh, this is what she's been living in before. Basically a little quarantine tub. And so she's gonna have quite a bit of an upgrade in her new enclosure. So we'll try and find her in here. Now this is small fry. This is my girlfriend's beautiful little Stimson's python. There you go. And she's actually almost starting to go a bit dull, obviously coming into a bit of a shed, but she is a stunning little example of her species. She's a um, NT uh, Sunburst Stimmy. So we'll pop her in and watch her enjoy her new habitat. And there we go. She loves it. I'll give you guys updates as time goes on. Hopefully you got some inspiration from this and learned a thing or two. Otherwise, if you want to see more things like this or other things on Australian reptiles, make sure you subscribe. Give the video a like if you liked it. And we'll see you next time.